Hi all, welcome to the second part of the video lecture on physical data organization. In part one, we gone to the basic terminologies and how this records, uh, I mean pixel length, variable length record and how these things can be stored. Right, so these are all the things uh, we gone through. Now, let's see something more uh, like uh, record blocking, okay, so about blocking factor, something like that. So typically, you know, in the hard disk information is stored in the form of blocks, right. So that is some basic unit we are having. Uh, so let me take an example for example size of this particular block is a 1 kb okay and you know <coughs> what is 1 kb 1024 bytes now uh, like that there are many blocks so this is a particular block uh, there are there many blocks you can uh, in the se second number you can visualize it like that and now so this is just a unit of uh, storage that's all now when it comes to a file database file you know there are many records right so for example suppose there are a uh, thousand records mm, in our file maybe a small file and size of a record is the size of a particular record on record i'm just taking an example say let it be 100 byte okay so that that is a scenario and if that is the case can you tell me how many such blocks can be stored in a particular how many such records can be stored in a block number of records per block what is it it will be you know 1024 byte one block can store and one record is of size some 100 byte right so how many such records can be stored it is just 1024 divided by 100 byte by two cancel so you'll get it like a 10.24 right so this is what we call as the blocking factor so we call it as blocking factor so something like a bfr which is the blocking factor so that about it and uh, now uh, it is saying something like uh, there are 10 records you can fully store and for the last 11th record some fraction you can store now if you don't want to store a fraction of it you can uh, use this notation and what is this mm, seal right so so that so that it will give you some value of 10 so that is a basic thing but typically we have two types of organization that we will see like spanned and unspanned organization and something like this we are using when it comes to Mm, unspanned organization uh, un unspanned okay so spanned organization means mm, if there is some empty space so here it will be like this is the first record and this is the second record etc so this space is filled and this space is filled etc now when it comes to the last record uh, maybe some uh, till this is fully filled right some last this much area is free so that is for this point two four okay now whether you are going to store so this is at 11th record you can't store this 11th record completely here so if you want you can keep the space empty when it comes to um, spanned organization so that means here you stored some uh, 10 records you stored per block right so this is what you done and uh, mm, there is another organization called spanned organization where what you will be doing is for the this particular one say you will store record uh, some 10 records you will store say 10 records occupied still this this much space and so this is our 11th record okay 11th record and what we are going to do is we will store how much fraction of this 11th record we can store we will store here and the remaining portion we will store in the next block okay something like this so you what i am trying to say for the 11th record so this is my 11th record i am giving this color shade okay so here i am storing some part and the remaining part i am storing here and i'll be typically maintain a pointer from this block to this block saying that the continuation of this record is available here because we don't know from where in memory this is available right so typically this kind of a pointer will be mm, it is better to use okay uh, if it is not a contiguous allocation so this is what we call as a spanned organization so in that case 10.24 could be a blocking factor but when it comes to unspanned organization we will not we will take that uh, integer portion only that is 10 okay so this is what is explained here so suppose uh, in general you can use this formula mm, if b is the block size and r is the record size the blocking factor will be a size of block divided by size of record you got it right and what is this will function everything is clear for you and bfr is a, a blocking factor okay Blocking factor means number of uh, records per block, that's all. 
now you know some space is free there in the sense for example so when you take this formula you are getting it as 10 in the sense thousand there are 10 records in this particular block that i can store in every block and size of this uh, so here i assumed block size uh, block are of fixed length and all when it comes to variable length accordingly it's not possible for you to do like this you have to add individual blocks and you have to find out okay so that is a different thing but anyway uh, there are or uh, in case of variable length record you can think about average size according accordingly you can tell about the blocking factor average size of an record that also you can take as a measure so here i am saying that there are 10 records in a block and each record is of size 100 bytes so totally it, it is consuming some uh, thousand uh, bytes right so remaining there are 24 bytes and that 24 is this okay so that means this much uh, space is unused in this example so how can i calculate the unused space that is by, by this formula in our example the size of the block is found to be 1024 minus the blocking factor i got as 10 in the size of a record is 100 byte only and i'm getting some 24 byte as a um, as unused so if you want you can utilize this space by using spanned organization that is the conclusion so to utilize the unused space uh, that we explained in the previous slide right uh, so we can store part of a random uh, of a particular record on one block and the rest in the another one and uh, typically we will maintain a point at the end of the first block that points to the block containing the remainder of the record uh, um, if it is not in consecutive blocks okay then this organization is what we call as spanned organization okay so whenever record is uh, larger than a block sometimes single record itself is of size more than this 1024 byte because block size is something fixed with respect to that secondary memory organization suppose the record can have a size of 2000 byte, byte definitely the only option we have is spanned organization because you can't uh, store uh, even a single record in a particular block right so uh, so that about it uh, so if records are not allowed to cross block boundary organization is called unspanned mm -hmm. and this is uh, with the fixed length record um, because it makes each record start at a non position and uh, it is um, uh, what I can tell it is it is some kind of direct uh, storage right so like the records are of fixed length so from this location onwards this much say 100 byte is used by each record so it is very straightforward um storage as well as you know it the pro record processing will be easy for you but because uh, but when it comes to variable length record as well as spanned organization that is no slightly complex than this kind of a fixed length record and unspanned organization concept anyway sometimes we need the other one also right so for uh, variable length uh, records either spanned or unspanned organization can be used but when it comes to fixed length uh, unspanned is the right combination okay so that that about it now um, so for variable length records uh, using spanned organization each block may have some different number of records so in this case the blocking factor represents the av so this is something i told you average number of records per block but uh, so i can just tell it is an average number i am saying that blocking factor is 10 that means on an average 10 records can be fit in a particular block but sometimes uh, if the record size is uh, large okay relatively large that this number will be less like uh, i can't i may not be able to uh, store and on an average 10 record but if i have a small size record maybe most of the optional fields are not applicable for that particular record in that case record size is of smaller and that time you can store more than this 10 okay so if i'm saying that average number of records per block is 10 in the sense Mm, that value can go high as well as low depending on the size of the individual record now the one more th formulation is uh, the, like uh, so in the previous case i taken like i am totally having some uh, thousand records right and one block is capable of storing 10 record then how many such blocks are needed so to uh, for storing the entire file thousand by ten hundred blocks are needed something like that okay so uh, what we are so let me take an it's a slightly different example suppose i have a Mm, say 3000 records i have and uh, i'm telling you the blocking factor is 10 so what does this 10 says 10 records can be stored in a single block okay so one block is capable of storing 10 records then the number of blocks needed for the database file containing that uh, 3000 records so i have a database file 
of 3000 record okay so that is the case so, so how many such blocks are needed so totally i need 3000 records to be stored right records to be stored and one block can store 10 record record per block then how many blocks are needed i need uh, say 300 blocks are needed okay so this is what is calculated here the number of blocks required is something like a total number of records you want to store divided by blocking factor that is the number of records per block this will give you the total number of blocks needed and why we are taking that uh, seal function here because if you are getting instead of 300 uh, let me tell you if it is uh, three uh, some uh, three uh, suppose you got it like a 300 dot some 2.24 uh, something that says that uh, the last portion right that, that fraction i need a 301 the block so totally here i need 300 block uh, for uh, storing 3000 record but actually suppose the number of records i'm having is 3010 for example or 3024 mm, so what will happen so when you divide you will get it like a 300 uh, dot no, sorry 3024 uh, means you will get like a 304 dot okay so uh, you got it right uh, and on dot uh, for something so that for that fraction i need uh, the one more block okay so that is uh, for getting that we are taking this uh, seal so here uh, there is no use uh, because so what i can do is i can slightly change the question so what i can tell you is suppose this is the case suppose uh, the total number of records I have is 3025 records are there so this many uh, records and 10 uh, as usual so now you will get it like uh, uh, 302.5 so in the sense 302 blocks are needed and 0.5 in the sense I need one more block okay so that is uh, what I mean by this so you can use this seal function and that will give you the value 303 blocks okay that's all so this is how you are storing unspanned as well as spanned or suppose unspanned organization this space is just uh, free but spanned organization one particular record so this is our fourth record and fourth record some part i am storing here and remaining part i am storing here and then i am keeping a pointer from here to here so this is my um spanned organization okay just make it so clear right so now certain uh, so small things are like uh, allocating files block on disk and there are different ways this is something you might study in operating system and all there is something called as contiguous allocation in the same the whole file you will be storing in continuous memory location so that access everything is straightforward and there is another one linked allo allocation which is practically more used in the sense wherever space is there there you will allocate the blocks and you will maintain something like a mm, pointer from one block to another to track the information in a continuous manner so this is very easy to expand because wherever space is there other other case you need continuous space so whenever you are uh, inserting some record in between and all it will create too many shift operations everything and it is uh, slightly complex right now typically you can think of a combination of both this contiguous and uh, linked allocation called uh, uh, something like uh, some clusters you can think of uh, so the combination of clusters of consecutive blocks and the clusters are linked to each other so within a cluster we can see the blocks are continuously allocated so cluster is something a large grouping of blocks okay so which is currently free so and different cluster you so don't try that uh, complete randomness instead within a cluster if you are allocating records continuously it is good right so you don't have to worry about their access and all but when it comes to one cluster if the information you can't store within a cluster you can extend to a different cluster and you can keep a link from one cluster to another so mm, this is sometimes called as this file segment i can see one cluster as a segment and it is extending from one to another so there is something called as um, indexed allocation also here also we will keep the uh, file here and there wherever space is there uh, in different blocks you will keep but to track them in a continuous manner you can uh, keep an index table Mm, where you will uh, maintain some anchor information as well as a pointer to this uh, block so that will track the information in a continuous manner the in index table is continuous so that is uh, what makes this different 
so there is index allocation also anyways we will see this indexing uh, separately actually as a secondary access mechanism but anyway this is something you might have seen in other uh, st storage related subjects i mean <laughs> in the sense um, you might seen it in computer organization or operating system when we uh, when uh, that concept of storage and all is being discussed yeah then uh, there is another concept called a file header you know in uh, associated with each database file we typically maintain a header so that is like a descriptor that contains uh, uh, more in information about the file uh, maybe the data type of the file the type of content what are all these special symbols we use to separate one field from another must say must uh, separate one multi-valued attribute um, value from another or for uh, uh, like that you know from on record so uh, all those extra informations will be the mm, okay and also in the hard disk itself from which location onwards we start the storing this information so like that um, all the meta information we will keep in the header and it is always good to keep such a header uh, for every file so by which you will get uh, a detailed description about so that about it thanks for watching we will continue um, further uh, topics in this next video